A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you might be watching this because I have an international material right here with me. And so, based on where you are, habari yako. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is Sitam Church Online and today we're having a very interesting conversation. A conversation where you don't want to touch that dial, you don't want to go anywhere. Kinyanji Maria is my name and today I have an amazing person who you'd want to listen, you'd want to hear what his story is all about, how far he has come, where he is going and what he is doing. Karibu sana. Welcome, Bishop. Thank you. Karibu. My honor. And you are pleasure. glowing, glowing. Well, it's the anointing. Of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amazing. And Karibu sana. Asante. You're welcome. Yeah, thank God. For anyone hearing you for the very first time, uh -huh. please tell them who you are and what your name is. Wow, it's a long story, but mm -hmm. let me put it in a short form. Yes. Um, I'm born again. I love Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm married mm -hmm. uh, to Joy yeah. uh, for the last 31 years mm -hmm. and God has blessed us with two lovely grown-up children. Yes. Uh, I want to emphasize grown-up children <laughs> yeah. because they're no longer small boy and girl. Yes. And I've uh, been in ministry now close to about 30 years, mm -hmm. serving with Christ's Yansa Ministries. Okay. And currently, I'm uh, the senior pastor mm -hmm. at Sitam Kong. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. So you've been a pastor at Sitam for how long? Uh, as I said, close to about 30 years. Okay. Uh, formerly, I would say about 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, because what happened, uh, when I got married to my wife, mm -hmm and we were beginning life. Yes. Uh, that's where the call of God came. And uh, I found myself uh, convincing her that I sense God is going to call me into full-time ministry. Yeah. And thank God my wife was one who had a background of uh, having been brought up in a home where the mother was a church person. Yeah. And then also she was born again and uh, very actively involved in ministry. Mm -hmm. So ministry was not anything far-fetched according yeah. to her. Yeah. And so we were able to connect very easily. And uh, two years down the line after we got married, mm -hmm. I found myself resigning from the job that I used to do with yeah. the Teacher Service Commission. Okay. And I took up the challenge of going into full-time ministry okay. and uh, it's during that period of time that you know I also got into Bible college because I needed to train mm -hmm. uh, because when I went to see the senior pastor then mm -hmm. uh, the, the renowned Dennis White, White yeah. yeah he told me you need to go to Bible college and get <laughs> yourself ready for ministry yeah so I, I went to Bible college yeah. uh, it took me about four years to train mm -hmm. uh, for my bachelor in Bible and Theology okay. at the, the Pan-African Christian College, which mm -hmm. is now Pan-African Christian University. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I came and served with SITAM mm -hmm. as an intern for one year. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I was also inducted officially mm -hmm. as a pastor okay. uh, way back those days. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I've been to different assemblies, you know, the way we serve yeah. in Sitam. Yeah. You can be a pastor in any of the uh, locations uh, where Sitam is based. Yes. And so I've served in about eight different locations. Wow. Some repeating. Uh -huh. uh, but in terms of my transfers and being able to serve in different uh, congregations, that's mm -hmm. about eight times. Mm -hmm. And then also I've served from an intern mm -hmm. uh, to the Deputy Bishop of Christ's Yansa Ministries. Amazing. Yeah, so it's been a journey that spans close to about uh, 30 years or so. 30 years. Yeah. Why Christ is the answer? Why Christ is the answer? Because when I graduated from college, mm -hmm. one of the things that was on my mind was to join a, a, a church mm -hmm. which I know was evangelical, spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, we normally say a Bible-believing church. Church, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So I looked out for a Bible-believing church, mm -hmm. a place where not only would I get myself nourished spiritually, mm -hmm. but because of the background that I'd come from, which was very active 
uh, in terms of uh, Christian Union mm -hmm. exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, I also desired to join a church mm -hmm. where I could participate in the ministries of the church. Yeah. And so I got myself immersed mm. into different ministries, mm. whether visitation, yeah. I did counseling, mm. I was involved in uh, missions and outreach. Yeah. I was also uh, an usher mm -hmm. uh, and wow. other things that yeah. we were doing there. Yeah. Yes. So you started off from servanthood to how you risen to a deputy bishop. Exactly. Okay. Yes. How many churches you're talking about? Because of the transitions have been eight. Yeah. But how many churches in particular? Those are about five churches. Five. Because initially I was in Valley Road mm -hmm. and then uh, we went to Woodley now as senior pastor. Mm -hmm. And then after Woodley we went to Pioneer and plant the church in Buruburu mm -hmm. uh, and then came back to Valley Road okay. again as the senior pastor uh -huh. and uh, served there for a while before again being asked to go back to Buruburu a second time okay. uh, as the senior pastor there uh -huh. but also serving alongside as the deputy bishop of mm. Crisis Yansa Ministries. Okay. And then I took a sabbatical around 2019, mm -hmm. 2020 when I came back in I was posted to be the senior pastor in uh, Sitam Thika Road, okay. uh, where I served for about two years. And then later on, uh, after the two years, I was asked to go and be the senior pastor at the current station, mm -hmm. which is Sitam Gong. Yeah. yeah. So at these transitions, you're moving from one church to another. Yes. For initially, we didn't have children. We just gotten into marriage. Uh -huh. And so by the time you're transitioning, your children are all grown up. Yes. How was it for them? I think for us, uh, between my wife and I, mm -hmm. it has been a time of growth and uh, transformation mm -hmm. in every word of it. Because when we got married, of course, there were only the two of us. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the call was on our lives. Yeah. And when I went to Bible college, that's mm -hmm. when we were expecting our firstborn. Mm -hmm. And later on, two years, while well, I was still a student at the Bible college, we got our second born. Wow. And so when I finished Bible college to mm -hmm. go into full-time ministry, mm -hmm. we were a young family. I mean, our kids were toddlers. Mm -hmm. And so we have raised them up in, uh, in a church setup. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the other advantage that we had mm -hmm. is uh, being at Sitam Woodley. Mm -hmm. Woodley also has got the uh, Sitam Academy. Okay. So our children actually went to the Sitam Academy yeah. while I pastored mm. at, the, at the church. So it was a bit easy for you? In a way, mm -hmm. because I could get to see them and they could get to see me. <laughs> yeah. We were on the same compound, and yeah. so we come together in the morning and we go back home together in the evening. All right. uh, and so we have raised up our children through that kind of uh, exposure in the Sitam schools. Mm -hmm. And then later on, of course, they went to different uh, uh, high schools. Yeah. And uh, of course, again, also into different universities to mm. pursue their different career. Um, academic lines. Okay. Yeah. Of course, in every journey we have the highs and the lows. Yeah. Do you have one in particular that you felt it was your lowest between the years that you've done ministry? I would say uh, ministry is a walk of faith. Okay. Um, in fact, I was likening it to somebody else the other day and I was saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like two people getting married mm -hmm. and when I counsel with them I normally say uh, the person you're getting married to is mm -hmm. not perfect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're human eh? yeah and therefore they can make mistakes mm -hmm. uh, most probably they will hurt you mm -hmm. <laughs> in the marriage ceremony. yeah yeah so I prepared them psychologically for that kind of eventuality yeah and I would say the same thing applies when it comes to church ministry, ministry yeah. that in as much as we come into church church is not a perfect place mm. because there are human beings that you meet there and by virtue of having human beings that you're rubbing shoulders with yeah. that you're ministering to mm. you're bound to get into sometimes some disappointing moments mm -hmm. um, there are times you find uh, even among us church uh, leadership, there could be one person or the other that you don't quite agree yeah. for 
for reasons sometimes you cannot even put your hand on, yeah. uh, your finger on, or there could be a situation where among it's yourselves as pastors, mm. you can just find rivalry, competition coming in, mm. uh, or other times you may find that you're ministering to mm -hmm. uh, congregants mm -hmm. and uh, probably there are others who come to you with ulterior motive. Yeah. Uh, you know, they know this pastor has got a soft heart. Yeah. <laughs> so they take advantage of your soft heart. Yeah. And sometimes if you're not very careful, uh, you could find yourself hurt mm -hmm. because they could put you in an awkward position. Yeah. Um, so those are different things that happen in ministry. Yeah. Uh, I normally call them occupational hazards. Yes. There is nowhere you will work where you will not find dangers or where you will not find uh, situations where people probably not agreeing yes. or scenarios where maybe you are given a heavy task mm. and you have to uh, accomplish it mm. uh, and you have the deadlines and the challenges that go with accomplishing that particular task. Yeah. Yeah. So those those are there mm. uh, within the ministry. Amazing. Yes. But you've managed to, to succumb them all. Yeah, in a way, by God's grace. Amen. I must qualify by God's grace. All right. Because, uh, you know, there are times you find yourself wanting to throw in the towel. Yeah. And you're wondering, so God, <laughs> what is it? What is the direction? Yeah. Uh, uh, what are you trying to do with me? Yeah. What are you trying to teach me? Yeah. And uh, I think for me, with the experience that I've gone through, mm -hmm. that's when I've come to actualize the scriptures because mm -hmm. when we read the bible mm -hmm. most of the times most of us read the christmas uh, the scriptures like as if they are just stories that mm -hmm. happen to people then mm -hmm. in the bible mm -hmm. but really many of the narr narratives that we read in the bible are true stories that can happen to any of us as yeah. human beings yeah whether it is betrayal uh, whether it is backstabbing, mm. whether it is finding difficult people in your life mm. and you have to live with them, mm -hmm. or whether it is a, a humongous kind of a task and you have to accomplish that. All these things are interplayed mm. in the life of a servant of God. Yeah. And so if you're the kind of person who relies on your own mm -hmm. understanding like the book of proverbs, proverbs five yeah. and six say yeah if you lean on your own understanding it is very possible uh, that you could get to a place where you feel frustrated mm. you could get to a place where you could be disappointed mm. you could get to a place where you want to give up mm. or give in and so for me really it is all accounted to the grace of god Amen. you know letting mm. god work in me mm. both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Amen. Yes. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Bishop Ken Kimiri. Having told us his journey, 30 years, I mean, it can only be God. Do not touch that dial. You are coming in for the second segment. This is Sitam Church Online. Subscribe, share, like, and follow us. And God bless you and do your good. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.